Good morning all. Jack here hanging out on Nine Mile Farm doing my morning chores. Which right now includes doing a little bit of watering on some of these beds. Because even though they're wicking beds, uh, in areas where I've harvested and I've got opened, I've got seed in there now. So even though the soil's nice and moist, you know, uh, a couple inches down, and all these plants that have roots down are happy, new seeds, we need a little bit of mist every day. So I have to be out here every morning, and I thought this would be a, a moment to pause and show you something that you probably need to know about if you ever plan on growing a certain plant. And that plant is Jerusalem artichoke. Um, that's not what this plant is. This guy here is a plant I'm trialing this year. I got it in the ground rather late. I just want to see how it's going to do. And if it does anything, then I'll, I'll be using it in the spring next year. It's called Seminal Pumpkin. I learned about it from Rob Greenfield when I had him on my podcast. And it grows very fast. This plant you're looking at was planted about two weeks ago. And as you can see, it's already got huge leaves, good strong vines starting to come out, nice leader vine on it. Uh, probably could use a little bit more fertility. This bed could probably use a little boost. You can see right there, it's not quite as dark as I like it, but I mean, having never grown it before, maybe that's what the younger leaves are supposed to look like because the lower leaves are just awesome banging green. You notice I got some bush beans in here. They're really happy too. Okay, let's go over here. That's important to understand. When I built these beds, I put the exact same soil mix in them at the exact same time. They've been treated the exact same way. The difference is I got these Jerusalem artichokes growing in this bed. That's a seminal pumpkin planted two weeks ago from the same seed packet as the one I just showed you. As you can see, it's not happy. Uh, there's some garlic chives in here that are doing kind of okay, but anything I planted here, I planted some beans in here earlier this year. I ended up pulling them out. They just looked like they were dying constantly. Um, over here, there's some cucumber that I planted <clears throat> and it, seem to be doing okay but you can already see the color and I expect this to just not go anywhere here's some more seminal pumpkin planted on the same day now I want you to contrast that look it's it's not dying it's just stunted in growth it's just not growing look at that come back over here same day two weeks growth two weeks growth over there so what does that mean? Does that mean that Jerusalem artichoke is a bad plant? No, it doesn't mean it's a bad plant. What it means is if you want to grow it, because it's a great plant, wherever you're going to grow it, you're going to grow it. And one of the things I've seen people fail at is a lot of people have tried to use Jerusalem artichoke as a basis for some variation, perennial variation of three sisters with corn, beans, and squash, and try to do something like uh, another small tuber crop and like... Uh, uh, hog, pe hog peanut or something like that or whatever and it, it just never seems to work for anybody. I think this is what? Um, it makes sense. This is a this uh, plant again Jerusalem artichoke If you can see some of the flowers coming up on it here, they look like what? They look like sunflowers and they look like sunflowers because this is a Holanthius species and they, they have the same similar leaf pattern the same rough and Holanthias in general tend to be somewhat allopathic. Sunflower itself tends to be allopathic. And usually it's the leaves themselves that are allopathic and they leave a residue in the soil that persists for a while. And that doesn't mean if you grow sunflowers all your plants are gonna die, but you might see that like around one sunflower, you have some issues. Now the big thing is your bigger sunflowers, your giant leaves, they tend not to fall off. Like the, the artichokes seem to shed, shred, shed quite a bit of leaf throughout the year where your larger sunflowers, you may grow it completely and just remove it and have no issues. With Jerusalem artichoke, it seems to me, you know, it's not, I'm gonna say this is conclusive proof, but I would say this is what you would call damning evidence. So we may find that there are some plants that don't really care about the oleopathic chemicals that Jerusalem artichoke is putting down. For instance, when it comes to um, trees, Juglone species like black walnut and pecan uh, have an oleopathic effect on a lot of plants, but things like persimmon, uh, things like black cherry, um, things like autumn olive all can tolerate it and they grow just fine with, with uh, pecan. So maybe if I continue to grow Jerusalem artichoke in this, this one bed, because it's totally worth doing, I'll get so much caloric yield out of this, it's totally worth giving that space to it. Uh, maybe in time I'll find something that will grow with them. but. 
Again, this year I started out trying to grow beans in this system, and I also grew peas on one side of it and figured they would trellis up. All of them went lackluster, turned yellow, and basically they didn't die, but they were so unable to grow. Eventually I pulled them out. When I pulled them out, they had little bitty tiny root systems. So just know, if you're gonna grow this, think about where it goes and think about what goes around it.